yeah, marriage has not been hard. And if, if marriage is hard for you, something's wrong. Mm -hmm. Figure it out. I'm not saying, oh, you're not compatible. No, yeah, no. but there's something wrong and mm -hmm. you, you should work on it because um, it should feel, honestly, it should be a, a smooth transition because, and, and let me tell you this, a lot of people, that's, that's like the, the question to ask is, what is love? Mm -hmm. What is love, right? Everybody has their own yeah. definition. Mm -hmm. I think, to me, to Oscar mm -hmm. Ayala, mm -hmm. love is fun mm -hmm. and it's not this serious thing. Like, it's not this serious thing. 85% of the time, if I'm in a room with my wife, we're joking about each other. Mm -hmm. we're, we're laughing and gossiping. We love gossip. <laughs> We love gossip <laughs> and we love just like joking on each other. It, mm -hmm. Sometimes like, oh, you do this, 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 and we're just laughing. And and that's why I enjoy my time with her because I don't see it as I got to spend time with my wife. I'm like, let, me, like let me hear the tea. <laughs> let me get that gossip. Let me, I got a good joke. I got to tell her and, uh -huh. and this and that. Prep. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sometimes I do things on purpose that, so that she calls them out. You do, and, and she... Mm -hmm. it's just that back and forth mm -hmm. i really enjoy it so mm -hmm. she's genuinely my, my best friend or one of my best friends right um and yeah i love marriage like that yeah being man. married is the best so social, the world of social media just confused everybody and you know like guys now want this cute model stuff like that the stuff they see on the instagram and and that's that's not how life or relationship is yeah. All those things you see, fine, so good. That's not it. Like the character. What's the content of the character? Right. Is it the best? Is it so beautiful as they are outside like that? The outward appearance should never be like the hundred percent influence in your decision making. A hundred percent, no. But yeah, it, it can be. Oh, a hundred percent. Obviously, everybody wants a fine looking damn self. You don't want to right. look at wake up in right. the morning and like, oh my god. <laughs> What did I do? <laughs> I, should, I should have done it. No, you have to be attracted to yeah, the partner, gotta, yes. of course. But it, it don't have to be like 100% like, oh, based on this person's um, physical no, 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 outward no. look, no, no, no. I'm going in for this. No, no. And the, the unfortunate thing is, people do that. Yeah, that, people do that. that's very popular now. Yeah, people do that. Like, and oh, this doesn't so, happen. Yeah, she's, just, oh, she's so fine. I don't need to know when yeah. she's so good. She's yeah. good. And then now you realize the content of her character, if you want to read it from a scale of 1 to 10, it's a negative five. Not even up Imagine. to one. That's and you're crazy. like, damn, no. bro. No. How did that do this? And your mom want to see you. And your wife want to see you, right? In, in, at the same time, who are you going to see? I'll see you both because I live with them. <laughs> no, no, no. Let's just assume that as someone <laughs> totally different. Are you going to see your mom or you see your wife? At the same time? At the like same they time. They want to see you at the same time. Hey. I know my mom longer, so I gotta be with my mom. No, <laughs> no you know. Um, I'm putting you in the spot now. Your wife is watching. She's like, she's right, she's right now. She's but, listening. She wanted, yeah, you know. <laughs> no, I, I would probably, you know, my mom, she's, like I said, an elder, so she would understand. Dang. Hey, mom. Yeah. I'm going uh, to be there tomorrow. Uh -huh. Me and I are doing something today. Very so important, bro. 100%. Not only, she would, of course, son. Yeah. Uh, uh, let me know what time so I can have something yeah. ready for you to eat or something. That's yeah. what she would say. 100%. Your wife should be number one, honestly, brother. Your wife should be no, not like you're going to neglect your mother. No, your mom is always going to be your mom, regardless. And you cannot let anyone come between you and your mother. But at the same time, the Bible says you're going to leave your father and mother and you claim unto your wife and you become one. Mm. So you have to know that. You know, sometimes people make these mistakes, though. Your wife want to see you and your mom want to see you at the same time. And you go with your mom and you mm. leave your wife there. No. So your wife got to be competing with your attention with your mother. No. You, Not a good sign, brother. You can't. You know, people think that when so, when uh, someone gets married, they bring in two, um, two families together, mm. you know? But that's not it. When, when someone is getting married, they're creating a third family. Ah. Uh. Yeah. So you got to respect those, you got to respect the newly wedded couple to take the time to know each other, know, enjoy the moment. Because when people keep intruding, they're like, this guy is supposed to do it. I've been married for this number of years. Da, 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 da. Yeah, yeah. Now yeah, you, yeah. Don't des you don't design your home the way you want to do it. Now you're using any, someone's blueprint for your life. And it's tough because sometimes you get. Problems, 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 problems every day. And you wonder why. Sometimes someone might just, like your relative, just walk in straight to the kitchen. Now, that's not right. 
you have to understand that you, you can't just walk into someone's, like someone just got married and you, because you think you're the brother or the sister, you just walk, you come into the house, you don't even knock or greet anything, you just open the door, pop up, go to the straight of the kitchen, check the pot and see, is there food right. in here? That's not good, bro. I always like to ask married men, serious question, think about it. Okay. Have you ever thought about the possibility of having another person? I didn't say it going to have another person, just thinking about the possibility of having another person. Like another Another girl. wife? Yeah. No, <laughs> never. Why? <laughs> Honestly, so uh -huh. let me tell you something. I have, I've, I've had a couple of other relationships in my life. Mm -hmm. And when you have your first love, it's not love. Mm -hmm. You think it is. Yeah. And then then you find another one. Mm -hmm. And you're like, oh, now this is love. Uh -huh. That wasn't love. This yeah. is love. Hello, welcome to another episode of the Ben Rollins Blueprint Podcast. I'm your host, Ben Rollins. I want them to thank you for tuning in for today's episode. I really appreciate you for everything you do. Just stay to the end to enjoy this amazing episode. I have a great guy in the building, my Hisp one of my Hispanic friends, <laughs> all the way from Blendersburg, Maryland. And ladies and gentlemen, please join me. Welcome to one and only. Oscar, oh yalla, how you doing, my man? Did I say that right? Yeah, you got it right. You got it. Right. What's good, bro? Happy man, I was here. scared. I was like, let me not say this name wrong. Bro. Nah, you got it right. Ayala. Yeah, Ayala. How you doing today, bro? I'm good. I'm blessed to be here, bro. Happy man, to be here, man. I'm so glad that you took just a little moment for of your time to come here to the show. Right. I'm a super busy person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> my guy said I'm not a super busy person. Como estas, amigo? Bien, y tú? Oh, muy bien, muy bien. Hey, you want to learn Spanish? Oh, but, uh, yeah, I want to learn Spanish. I speak Spanish just a little bit. For real? Yeah. That's good, man. The more you know, mm -hmm. the more you're worth. Yeah, like Spanish is good, man. Amigas and amigos. Hey, <laughs> we're about to do a Ben Rollins podcast in Spanish. Sp oh, love. That's going to be crazy. <laughs> People are going to be laughing their guns out. They're like, what's this saying? That's Spanish? Nah, I'm just kidding. I'm just letting. I'm still yeah. letting, bro. The subtitles on. Yeah, man. Yeah. How you? How is life like in the United States, brother? You like it? I love it. I love it. I, what? You get used to it, mm -hmm. right? There's no other word. Uh, there's no other way. You have to get used to it and embrace it. Yeah, that's true. I've been here most of my life now. So. Yeah, and you know, like I always like to go back, like back, back, back to really understand who the person I'm talking to is. So when you came here to America, you were nine years old. Yes. How was that process like coming to this country as a kid who understands Spanish and you come to a country where they speak English and you, in a, so you go to school and everyone is speaking English? Like, how do you cope and how do you feel? Like, how should I fit in? Oh, bro, I just got to step back and see what is happening in this school. So it wasn't that hard. I think the hardest part was obviously leaving your country your home mm, yeah that's all you ever known mm. and <clears throat> that was the hardest part when i got here the transition was relatively easy oh um a lot had to do with, of course my mom had already laid you know like she had everything ready for mm -hmm. us to have a smooth transition mm. and when i got to school i went to uh, elementary here and i um, i was the only one in my class that spoke Spanish. Mm -hmm. So that was hard, I guess, because I, I wasn't able to communicate with my classmates, my yeah. teacher, nothing. Wow. Um, but I still passed. How do you pass, man? I don't know. I, can, <laughs> can you fail fourth grade? Can you? I don't know. But I passed. I was in ESOL class. Uh -huh. um, I loved it because that's kind of the only place back then when mm -hmm. I came here. I, I went to Beltsville mm -hmm. and there wasn't a lot of Latino community there. Mm -hmm. It was barely and so and 
the only place where you saw your your you know, your people, your Latino people, mm -hmm. was ESO. Yo. So ESO was the only place mm -hmm. that I saw them. And so I loved going to ESO. And that's where I learned English. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it wasn't that bad. But you know what was? It sucks. I don't know. I don't think you know this, but when we came here, I was nine. I, I turned 10. And the people that we left over there, two years later, there was a big earthquake. Mm. And everyone died. Oh, no. Everyone. Wow. So the people, even my childhood friends, mm. there's nothing there. Wow. So the only life that I had that I missed, mm -hmm. that doesn't exist wow. because I had nothing. Of course, I had my grandmother that she passed now, but uh, and, and my grandfather and et cetera. But I'm talking about where we lived, that home mm -hmm. that we were renting out. Yeah. We, my mom was able to pay that off with my father and we moved here mm -hmm. and we were renting that out. And you know, the people, it was a big mudslide. So mm -hmm. it was a strong earthquake. It was more than seven or something like that. And uh, there was a big mudslide. It brought all the homes down. Mm -hmm. And some people just, they're still considered disappeared. Mm. missing yeah missing and the people that were renting our house they found the lady holding her baby oh. this is days later right days later it that's hard yeah it took it was in 45 seconds it took and everyone everyone was was gone wow that's crazy man just imagine you were still there exactly everything that's... happens for a reason we yeah. were meant to come here Mm -hmm. why were they meant to die that's something yes. for someone else to know yeah. i don't know but we were meant to be here wow man you must be so grateful that god saved you 100 percent. You, because you're so young at that moment you don't really you understand it but you don't understand it mm -hmm. you know what i mean like yeah. they tell you oh this happened uh -huh. and you're like oh okay but it doesn't hit you yeah. But I did see what it did to my mother, what my brother, mm -hmm. my sister. They experienced because they were older, right? Yeah. So they they really felt it. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I kind of as I grew, I was able to understand it yeah, and indulge true. it, and I was like, oh, that sucks. That sucks. Yeah, oh, man. You know, I'm still trying to get my head around you passing and going to the next class yeah. when you don't understand <laughs> English. So were you writing in Spanish or English? I wasn't writing at all. I was writing like my name. And then I, I remember they were trying to explain to me, you know, those tests that you do here, you got to fill the bubbles in. Uh huh. They were trying to explain it to me. And uh -huh. I was like doing X's and I know you got to do this. And they were, they would get some other girls to like show me. <laughs> and then I was like, you don't understand. Nothing. I don't understand it. So, no tiende. but I, they still pass me, bro. <laughs> you, basically, you just got to show up. Uh huh. That's all it takes. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's crazy. I did not know that, honestly. Yeah. So you, you just show up and you pass. You just write your fail. name. You can't fail? I don't think so, no. You can't fail. I mean, I'm living proof. I would have probably still been there. <laughs> 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 but as you got into high school, you, you knew how to speak English. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. When I got to high school, I knew how to speak English. Mm. Not the best English. Yeah, but, but at least you can get by. Yeah, 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 yeah very yeah, important. Yeah. That's good, though. So, like, when you got here and you, you had some difficulties speaking English, and what other stuff did you, can you say it was tough for you in this country? in your early days as a kid? Tough. No, no, no. Tough. Did you have, like, you just got here and automatically got friends? Got yeah, along so people? I've been that guy. I'm mm. that guy. Yeah. Um, Very outspoken. I'm outspoken. I At my wedding, my, my best man, who was my cousin, he said that I'm the type of guy that you sit me next to a tree, mm -hmm. and by the end of the day, I'll be speaking to the tree, mm. and me and the tree will be friends. <laughs> and I, I genuinely think that's true. Mm -hmm. I like to think of myself that I'm a people person and I love to talk to people. Yeah. And even if I couldn't talk or speak English, rather, mm -hmm. I made friends, man. I made friends, yeah. a lot of them and er everywhere I go. Yeah, yeah. That, that's that's very important. Honestly, if you're someone who is kind of outspoken, yeah, it's easy to get along with people, you know, like you can try to meet people like even though sometimes you might not be comfortable talking to the person but you're just like let me just try it out i feel the fear and you just do it anyhow and you say hey how you doing the moment you start that conversation you realize that bro i don't feel that fear no more but imagine making friends without speaking the language it's hard right yeah it's but really hard. you can without saying anything you can tell if a person is warm mm -hmm. and you know honest and I like to think maybe that's that's how nah, I don't these people are not my friends.
friends now, uh, right? Uh, Where it's been like 25 years, but um, I had a bunch of friends, bro. Yeah. Everywhere I, I used to go without speaking the, the, the... Yeah, and the thing is like, even, even if you don't know how to speak the language, there's some way that you can approach something, you know, a sense of humor. Yeah. Like everybody have a sense of humor. Yeah. I and, don't know about that. Not everybody. There's some people <laughs> that serious people. Bro. No, they're serious, but you ha they have their own this on another level. Maybe. You have to know how to break the pattern. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you don't know how to break it, it's going to be You're tough. You're not going to get to it. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. if you come and you try to make, you say something and they make it a little funny. Mm. And the moment you break that person's pattern and the person starts smiling, even though they know that you cannot, um, you don't really speak the language, they know at least you're trying. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when they know you're trying to try to show, oh yeah, this is what you can do. Even it means bring like Google Translate to kind of show you, and then you're laughing and talking. That's how it is, man. You might be saying something you don't even know what you're talking about, and they're like, oh, he's trying at least. Yeah, Let me man. be clear. Back then there was no Google Translate. That's yeah, man, yeah. that's true. That's yeah. true. There was yeah. none of that. There was none of that. So. And sometimes when you want to talk to somebody, like how do you do it though? If there was no Google Translate, like how do you do it? How do you talk? You're like, <laughs> soccer. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah man. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. I used to play a lot of soccer mm -hmm. growing up, and I think you know sports all together bring the people together. Yes, brings you together. Um, and I think that's a big. That's one of the main reasons that I was able to make a lot of friends. Mm -hmm. Just playing soccer. Yeah, playing soccer. What position were you playing though? Bro, back in elementary is. Whatever you want to play, uh -huh. I always thought of myself as a forward. Mm -hmm. Everyone want to be a forward. That was the worst. They want to score goals. I've always told people this. I mm -hmm. my relationship with soccer is like a toxic relationship. Yeah. I here's the so it wasn't like oh I'm just gonna focus in school. No, I didn't have that going for me. Mm -hmm. So soccer was everything for me, and you took that away, it was like, what do I do? What am I gonna do now? Yeah, that yeah. was depressing. That was that was hard for me. Yeah. So now you're asking yourself, what are you going to do now? And what was your thought process like? Am I just going to stay back and just don't know what to do? Or what am I going, what step am I going to take to get to another level? I think for, I stayed back actually for, in school, I stayed back in, in, you can't stay back in elementary, but you definitely can stay back in, in, high, in school. high school. Yeah, I mm -hmm. stayed back and uh, I just, I was never able to catch up, I guess. I, that. Honestly, I never said that, but losing my leg, my right leg, which is my dominant one. Mm -hmm. So those, they told me, oh, you need to get, you know, reconstructive yeah, surgery, surgery mm -hmm. and all of this. And we weren't set up to be able to do that at the moment. Mm -hmm. I don't work. You know what I mean? Yeah. I was counting on my parents and we weren't there. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm sure if, if, if my mom had to, she would have save up the money you know mm -hmm. moms will do anything for you but yeah um and yeah that's that's kind of what derailed me a little bit from 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 school and all of that stuff and kind of started i quit playing soccer i just started hanging out with bad kids in in high school and stuff mm -hmm. like that and it kind of led me a different path who knows i mean i i, I was never going to be pro anyways uh -huh. yeah. I'm sorry. the worst soccer player you've ever seen in your life so let's just assume that okay you were a good player right but you never went pro yeah and you were focused in school like what's what's Oscar life gonna be like today oh i probably i'll still be here uh -huh. in the ben rollins show yeah <laughs> ben rollins pocket uh -huh. no i don't it's hard it, yeah. that's hard to know mm -hmm. you know we'll never know yeah, genuinely mm -hmm. and um maybe i'll be a doctor yeah uh -huh. maybe i don't know yeah. That's my, that's my big thing. I don't know. I don't so, know what I want in life. So Still. Yeah. So when it took that away from you, right? And now you started, you said you had like some bike company, right? And did it make you feel like, bro, we're here for you? The bad company? Yeah. Yeah. I felt I was hanging out with the people that nobody wanted to hang out with. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, my mom wasn't really happy about that, but. It's just what I did, you know. Um, do I regret it? Yeah. Yeah. I should have done that. Mm -hmm. right? I'm, not, I, I'm not a bad person or I, I didn't do anything too bad or anything like that. Either. Yeah. No, you know, but I just wish things would turn out differently at that point. But I'm happy where I'm at now. Mm -hmm. So everything kind of always, it works out for you yeah. in the long run. 
right? Yeah. So the reason I'm asking that question is if there's a young Oscar right now, right? That's gone through the same thing you went through back then and is trying to take similar path. What are you going to tell that young Oscar? Breathe. Mm-hmm. Be patient. Yeah. It will come to you. Mm-hmm. Just breathe. Be patient. I feel like you don't always have to have the answer. Sometimes you just have to lay back, relax, and breathe. Mm -hmm. And just wake up the next day and do the same thing over and over. And eventually, you're going to find what you have to do. Mm -hmm. But pressuring yourself and and just jumping to conclusions and and, and just, oh, I have to do this now. No, Mm. no, no. You're young. You still got time. It's yeah. not a big deal. Calm yeah. down. Breathe. Make the mistake. We're blessed. Yeah. We're still blessed. Yeah. Right? Because me with a torn ACL, torn meniscus, um, bad, doing bad in high school, that life, mm-hmm. there could be a kid somewhere in the world that and looks at that and dream. I want that. Yeah. I want that. Yeah. Imagine. Man. Yeah. So your worst nightmare may be another person's dream. Exactly. Exactly. And the problem is when you think about it that way, you're like, bro, yeah. I never had it from that perspective at yeah. all. You know, some people are going through worse than you. Oh. Way worse. We're, we're blessed. Yeah. We're blessed. And you know, sometimes people go through some stuff like probably they were stealing or they yeah. were doing some bad things and stuff like that. And they think like, bro, I, I can't have an impact in society. I can't help someone else. What do I know? I've just been in the street doing stuff like that. But like all the stuff that you've been through, like everything you've done in your life qualifies you to talk to another person. A hundred percent. Because there might be somebody who's going through similar stuff. Yeah. And the one who hears somebody who went through the process and how is he now? Yeah. Just speak to me. Let me hear. And I'm going to make my life better. But sometimes they'll be like, no. I cannot do anything because I'm not qualified. Right. But that thing qualifies you to speak to that person's exactly. life. No, no, and that's no, life, no. man. Yeah. That's why I'm asking you this question because there might be somebody listening to this right now. I'm like, and the person might be like, oh, Lord, I'm going through similar stuff Oscar went through. Like, I got torn ACL and stuff like that. And now I don't know what I'm about to do in life. Yeah. I don't know what my purpose. I don't know what's my vision in life. It's okay. It's tough. Take your time. Yeah, and that's true, man. You got to take some time and then reflect. Ask yourself some question. What am I good at? Yeah. Is soccer the only thing I can do? No. Am I good to people? Yes. If I'm good to people, what can I do to help someone? Can I uplift someone's spirit? 100%. If you can uplift someone's spirit, you can add one or two things together. Yeah. Like, how can I be an, how can I create an impact in this person's life? If this person is sad, can I crack a joke and the person laugh? Yeah, then... Start That's writing great. it down. Yeah. Start like, what, what are some of the patterns? Like, what are some of the things that you do absolute best with the least amount of effort? That's what you should be focusing on. Yeah. Sometimes when something goes away, like God is trying to prepare you for another purpose. Mm. But you sitting back like, bro, that's all I ever knew. Yeah. yeah and yeah, that's yeah. everything I wanted to be. But he took it away because of, there's a reason for that. But now we just get so messed up like, bro, that's all I wanted to do. I don't know what God is trying to do in my life, but he's always preparing you. Every test and every trial and tribulation, he's trying to prepare you for another level. Until he knows you're ready for that dimension, mm. he's not going to take you there. Okay. And all that tests, all the problems, all the troubles, he's just like, hey, Oscar, are you ready? Are you ready? Now it's time. Yeah. Are you ready? Are yeah. you ready? And if you're not ready, he keeps bringing it up. Yeah. Bringing it on. Because all the strikes and tribulations prepares you for the future, prepares you for your next level, prepares you for the next dimension. It's but school then. It's yeah. a school. Yeah, because right? you're you're learning, learning, yeah. learning. And that's life. Until man. you're ready to graduate. Because if you're not ready, he's not gonna send you. Right. And that's why I say a lot of people are saying, Oh, I'm broke, I'm poor, this because if God gives you a million dollars now, what are you gonna do with it? People are like, I'll buy I'll just buy a car, no. buy a Ferrari, go for vacation. And you squander it. Yeah. That's why you don't have it. Yeah. Because you see all this entrepreneurship thing on Instagram and you think that's how it is. It's not. No. It's bloody hard, bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, yeah, man. That's why I was asking you all those questions because I know there's somebody. You never know who you're talking to. 
Yeah, that's you true. You never know. This life, you never know. We're yeah. saying this thing, just having a conversation casually, but someone is listening or someone is watching and they're like, my life. Yeah. I'm going through a lot in my life right now. But listening to this guy, it kind of made me realize that I'm not going through this alone. There are a lot of people going through the same thing. How I react will determine how my life will become. Because it's not all about reacting, but be proactive. Like, this thing happened. What did I do to change my life for the better? Am I just going to sit down and say, oh, I'm going to be miserable because this happened? That's why I see two people might go through the same thing, but the outcome, two different outcomes. Because one see it as a challenge and one see it as, bro, misery. I don't know what I'm going to do. Right. You can never do that. Um, I would say don't focus on the one negative. Mm -hmm. Focus on the million positives. That's true. And that's hard to do. Yeah. And that's why you have to have good friends around Mm -hmm. you Mm -hmm. or good family members, right? Your mom. Because they're going to help you see that. Yeah. Like I told you, right? We're blessed. Mm -hmm. But some people don't realize that. Some people, no, I lost my job. Yeah. Yeah. Blessed, bro. You're blessed. You You even have that opportunity to go search for another job and you have your own car and you still have your parents alive and and they love each other, et cetera. You're blessed. Yeah. Realize it. Yeah, that's true, man. And one thing, like never get your confidence, your confidence from your ability. Never get your confidence from your ability. Mm. Get your confidence from your intention. Mm. If your intentions are good, you're going to always be confident because you know I'm doing this from a place of peace, from a place of joy, and I'm trying to create a positive impact. I'm not trying to backbite or do something stupid. Yeah. But when you, you focus only on your ability, sometimes you might not be that good. And how do you feel? It's tough. Yeah. Yeah, it's tough. But when you know you're doing it from a place of like positive intent, you'll be like, nah, no matter the outcome, I'm going to live with it. Yeah. Because I know why I'm doing this thing. Exactly. And that's life, bro. And you're just going to keep grinding. And you know, finding your purpose is not an easy thing. Yeah. It's not an easy thing. I don't even know what I want to do now. You don't Honestly. Know. I don't. Really? I, I don't know what I want to do in my life. I don't. Then let's have a conversation then. <laughs> this <laughs> one's going <laughs> yeah, I don't know what I want to do. I don't know. What, when you say you don't know what you want to do, like, break it down. Well, professionally speaking, so I'm married. Mm-hmm. Had it. Yeah, wow. Well, <laughs> congratulations, man. Thank you. That's my biggest blessing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't want to, I don't know what I want to do professionally, right? So, like I said, I was never a good student. So, I dropped out of high school, got my GED, went, did some college, and then I realized I don't like college. Mm-hmm. Well, if you're not a good student in high school, most likely you're not gonna, you're not going to be a good student <laughs> in college. So, um, but I'm still there. I'm, I'm fighting for that associate's degree. Mm-hmm. It's been, what, 20. No, 2012, I I started going to to MC. To Whoa, work. for the associate degree. 2012. Wow. Well, that sounds like a lie. Like, if someone tells you that, they're like, there's no way. Bro, I'm still working towards that associate's degree. Wow. For what? I'm not, I'm not in, an, I don't want to use it. Mm-hmm. It's just something that I want to bring to the table for my mom mm-hmm. and say, mom, I did it. Mm-hmm. It's for her. It's not for me. Yeah. That doesn't, doesn't make any sense. Mm-hmm. But it's just that um, she's always the one. She's been pushing me, mm-hmm. you know, to do better. And, and um, I'm doing it for her. Mm-hmm. So I'm taking like one class here, one class there. I don't know what I want to do in my life. Mm-hmm. Is, do I want to be an electrician? Do I want to, I want to be a plumber? So, so I don't know. What, what are you good at, though? I'm good at talking to people. What You're good at talking to people? Yes. I, I believe that everybody has a gift. Mm-hmm. I was talking to my wife about this like two months ago. I said, my gift, or at least I'm not, I, I'm a humble guy. And I yeah. honestly, genuinely feel that that's my gift, that mm-hmm. I'm able to talk to anyone. Mm-hmm. And uh, and even if they disagree about politics or whatever, I don't care about that. Mm-hmm. We, we, you can sit down with anyone and have a, a nice conversation, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And I think that's my gift. Everybody has their gift. Yeah, so... The next question will be like, when you talk to somebody, how does it make you feel after the conversation? How do you feel after the conversation? Rather? Happy. Happy. Fulfilled. Fulfilled. Heard. Mm-hmm. Listened to. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like I'm smarter. You learn a lot from talking with people. Yeah. Um, it just, yeah, I feel complete. Mm-hmm. 
That's so, it. so when you feel complete, right? Have you ever thought about, hey, what impact did I make in this person's life? Have you ever thought it from that perspective? Mm, no, not to be honest, no. No, 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 no. And have you ever thought about, hey, am I adding value in this person's life? Sometimes I think I am adding value, but then sometimes they ask for, uh, what should I do here? What should I? And then I tell them, oh, you should do this. Mm -hmm. And then they do the, like the opposite. So I'm like, I'm not adding any value <laughs> here because they do like the opposite, right? Uh -huh. um, but yeah, I mean, even if it's out of a hundred things I say, mm -hmm. and not that I know best, yeah, because right? I'm still learning. Yeah, everyone is learning. We all students yeah, of life. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but if. If you ask me about something that maybe I am um, able to help you or, or, you know, and you do out of a hundred things, you do that one thing, then I made a difference. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. How about putting smile on someone's face? Oh, that that I can always do. You always do. I always, with anyone that I, I interact with, mm -hmm. that's my thing. So um, I'm a happy guy. I, I like laughing. I yeah. like joking around. Yeah. So what I'm trying to say, like, have you ever thought about like doing a podcast? I always and then, wanted to do and a then, podcast. And then make it like fun, a representation of you, you know, make it funny and make it like so jovial, mm. you know, like talk to people, you know, you you can, you can do it scripted or unscripted, you know. Oh, unscripted is the best. And then you know, like the particular type of guests you bring to your show. People who are, they don't really mind, they're not uptight, yeah, yeah. uptight, <laughs> uptight, uptight. People relax, calm, you know, yeah. talk it off and then you try to. Make it funny. Mm. And you know, you guys, you have like, this America. After English, it was Spanish. Yeah. Like Hispanic community, bro, is huge. That's true. That's a big market. That's true. And you can speak Spanish if you just want to focus on your, your Latino community. I'm, I'm learning German. Nah. <laughs> yeah, you speak Spanish yeah. or you mix Spanish up with English. It's Spanglish. Yeah, or Spanglish. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> That's Spanish and English. Yeah, you speak Spanish. Yeah. And all of a sudden, you see... People start, oh yeah, Oscar, Oscar, Oscar. Yeah. People are gonna say, Oscar de la Hoya. Hey. <laughs> like, yeah, man, that's how, that's how you do in life, brother. Like, no one has figured this thing out. Right. Oh, we all are students of life. Yeah. You know, sometimes when you when you discover that you're good at this thing, you have to sit down and reflect. It always takes time, you know. It's not like, oh, you're gonna realize that today I'm good at talking, and then tomorrow. Boom, I have the best podcast in the world, bro. It's nah. a process. Yeah, I can imagine. So, like, when when you discover that, oh, yeah, I'm a good communicator. So, what are some of the things that I can do to create value? In, I will create value and create an impact in someone's life. You know, when you look at it from that perspective, forget about the money. Just put the money aside, you know? Like, even if you create content and no one is watching, it doesn't matter. One person might see that and it creates value in a person's life. Mm. From that one person, the person might share it to another person and you get the dumb effect. Right. Yeah. But you have to, that's what I, I said earlier, focus on your intention. What are your intentions? Like, mind you, ask, like I post some content and I don't have like a lot of views and it don't really bother me. You know, like sometimes like I'm human, honestly. Sometimes you might get bored at, you know, get bored like, oh, I'm putting all this effort editing and doing all these things and people are not watching it. But on the other hand, you think about it like, what are my intentions? What am I trying to do? Right. I'm trying to make someone learn something from this thing. So I'm like, oh, I'm good. That that gives me peace and joy, honestly. Yeah. But if I were just thinking like, bro, this person have millions of views and I don't have millions right. of views. That time now you just get, oh, I mean, like as a competitor, honestly, I want to I want to get to the top, you know. Yeah. But at the same time, I have to know that it's a process, and exactly. you have to enjoy the process. Yeah, I would, enjoy the process. I would say that yeah, you should focus on like you see like other podcasts like Joe Rogan and all yeah, this Joe stuff. Rogan, yeah, Joe Rogan, yeah. But you're seeing the finished product. Yeah, you didn't How see did Joe Rogan when he started. He probably had like no views. It was hard for him. Yeah. So you didn't see that. You could probably scroll down and see those episodes. Yeah. But no one's gonna do that. And and you're in that process now. Mm -hmm. Enjoy the process. Yeah, that's that's the thing. You know, a lot of people always focus on. Oh, I want. I'm going to be happy when I get this. Mm -hmm. I'll be happy when I do that. But that's never happiness though. Yeah. Because the moment you get that, you realize that the goalposts keep moving 
and moving yeah. and moving. You want something else? Yeah, but it's in the process. Yeah. Like when you're doing that thing, you have to enjoy that moment mm. because that's where the growth is. That's where life is. Yeah. And people always say, ah, oh, I want balance in my life. Balance? Like, have you ever seen a standing sheep trying to find balance? Mm. A sheep only find balance when it's moving. So you have to keep moving to find balance. Because if you want to just sit down and say, oh, I want a balanced life. There's nothing as a balanced life, brother. Yeah. There's some times that you like, you can get five hours of sleep. Man, it's good. I mean, sometimes people may say, oh, it's health wise. Yeah, you don't have, you need to have at least eight hours. But once in a while, I get five hours of sleep because you're trying to do something to create an impact yeah. in someone's life. Yeah. Bro, like it's that perfect. feeling is a good feeling. Yeah. So sometimes you just got to enjoy the process and keep grinding, man. I know you, you're good at like, you know, this is the second time we're meeting each other. Yeah. And the first time, like we had a conversation with Felix and um, that. And shout it was, out to Felix. Yeah, shout out to Felix, by the way. And it was a great one. That's why I said, bro, I'm going to bring you to the podcast because yeah. you have that, that um, I'm going to say people spirit, you know, like Thank you. effective communicator. And you have to know like, hey, I'm good at talking to people. Can I uplift, can I uplift someone's spirit? If I can uplift someone's spirit, why not just take my phone every single day and just say something just to speak to someone's life? You might not do a podcast, man. Yeah. You just take your phone like on social media, you go on TikTok or Instagram or Facebook, anything. It's just like, hey guys, here's what I've been facing. And I think it's going to help someone today. Yeah. Da da Boom. And even if you don't, you have just one view on the person say, bro, this helped me. I was going through all the stuff. Yeah. Thank you very much for speaking to my life. That's Man, that's going to give you some extra motivation. Yeah. And you know, like little by little, little by little, you may realize that that's not actually what you're good at. Yeah. You might be good at another thing. Yeah. But when you start somewhere, you're going to you start discovering your strength. But it's a process. What you're going through, you got to jot things down. Like, oh, I did this good. But this other one, not so good. And then you grade it in the, in the scale of one to ten. This one. One to ten, maybe I'll give you a five. This other one, one to ten, yeah. maybe I'll give you a six. And when you start like going down, going down, you realize that, damn, bro, there's some things that I've not been focusing on that I gotta start paying attention to. And they're like, whoa, how can I become better at this? Self analyzing. Yeah, that's life. And you know, sometimes we don't try to sit down to reflect. We just like, Man, I want to go watch some soccer again. I want to play soccer. I want to listen to music. Everything, boom, 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 boom. And then you wonder why <laughs> you yeah. don't have life. Yeah. Man, it's so fucking messed up. But anyways, coming back to you. So you, um, this thing you said, you did not know what your purpose in life is and you see struggle with that. And once you left high school, what was your next step? Like, what were you thinking, bro? I'm out of high school and out. I just dropped out. What am I going to do now? I didn't, I think I just stayed home for a bunch of days. So I, I listen, I dropped out of high school mm -hmm. because back then I felt like I had a big, like a big ego. Mm. So I was um, 18 at the time. And bro, quick story. I, I'm in health class and we're watching a video in the class, yeah. like in the TV. And the teacher calls out my name. Hey, pay attention. Because I was talking. Mm -hmm. Right. Clown. clown uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, and he's a pay attention. And I go like this. I go, I'm watching. Mm -hmm. And then he said, get out. Mm. He kicked me out. And then he said, come on. And he said, hey, I'm not going to let you, you know, flip me off in my own class. Mm. And I said, honest to God, I didn't do that. He said, how am I going to tell my mom about this? <laughs> then you start thinking, ah, mm -hmm. I shouldn't have done that. So I went home. Mm -hmm. And I think for like two weeks straight. I pretended to, to go to school, to school. <laughs> <laughs> and I would go to my neighbor's house. Oh, yeah, that bad, you know, bad uh -huh. friends. He was he was not a bad guy, but just you know, he wasn't doing the right things. He was skipping too. Yeah, and we would just go there and go there until one day my mom didn't go to work, Ooh. and she saw me literally get out from the from the house and then pretend to go to school, and then I would wait there. I never saw her leave, mm -hmm. and then she saw me going. Back to the neighbor's house. Oh, and she, she followed go, you. She, no, she stayed home. She did her, her thing. 
But when I got home, she yeah. was upset. She was crying. She mm -hmm. was, and she should be, right? Mm -hmm. And she confronted me about it. And that's how she found out I was, I was, I had dropped out. Mm -hmm. And ever since then, because, you know, moms, they never turn their, turn their back on you. So yeah, no matter what you do. Um, so then she, she was, okay, you're out, but I need you to get your GED. So mm -hmm. she set it up like in a program where she was working at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, that they were offering GED for Latino, mm -hmm. uh, for the Latino youth or, or people that had, you know, um, issues with sometimes with the law and stuff. I wasn't in problem with the law, but she she was able to squeeze me in there. Mm -hmm. I was able to get my GED. And she was like, now you should go to college. And I didn't go straight into college. I waited. I started working odd jobs, bro. Like I worked at the movie theaters, Red Lobster, Macaroni Grills, a hair salon, all these places. Mm -hmm. Um, I was the receptionist at, at the hair. It's a beautiful day of bubbles. How can I help? Yeah. Um, that was me. Anyways, a bunch of odd jobs. And, and eventually I started doing some college, mm -hmm. but I wasn't still, I wasn't ready. Mm -hmm. I wasn't ready. I just thought I had to, to do it. Like, oh, it's time for me to do it. Mm -hmm. No, I failed all those classes. Mm -hmm. And um, it just never kicked in here. Like you got to take this serious, right? Mm. This is your life. You always think you're going to be 20 years old. Mm. And then you wake up one day and you're like, I'm 30. Yeah. <laughs> what do I do now? I, you know? Yeah. And it's just that kind of happened to me. Mm. And um, I eventually I did start taking, taking it more serious. And I started, I did take some classes. My GPA grew. Mm -hmm. Um in reference, I think my, right now my GPA at MC at Montgomery College is like at 3.4, which is wow. good. You know what my GPA was in high school? What? 0. 0.75. Whoa. That's how, and it's not because I'm not intelligent. I don't think I'm the smartest guy. Of course not. Mm -hmm. But high school isn't about being smart or dumb. Mm -hmm. It's about discipline, right? That's, yeah. that's basically school is discipline, yeah. you know, and I had none of that. So um, now I'm doing better. I don't know if I'm gonna, I'm gonna continue with college because you know work now is harder and mm. it's not as easy as it was before. Yeah. You, know, you could just focus on one thing and get that over with. Mm -hmm. But I'm still there. I'm I'm in the process. I'm I'm trying to learn every day. I'm trying to you know mm -hmm. do better, be a better son, be a better husband, mm -hmm. be a better father to my three uh, dogs that I love to death. <laughs> wow. And yeah. That's that's what I'm in the process. So like, how do you meet? How um, did you meet your wife though? Like, was it was it after that? I mean, like when you drop out of school, how long did it take? And then you, how was that? Yeah, I met her. I was definitely out of school, um, and I met her playing indoor soccer. Mm. So we had a friend in common actually. He had set it up not for us to like to no no, no no no. It was just for us to play indoor soccer. Mm -hmm. um, she was she was a really good soccer player. Wow. Yeah, like really good. Mm -hmm. Really, really good. Like she was one of the stars of her high school team. Um, and the, I think at some point they were even trying to offer her like scholarships and stuff, like to go play. But oh wow. She at she, at the time she didn't want it was like out of the state and mm -hmm. her parents felt like that wasn't the right thing to do or something like that. Mm -hmm. So she wasn't able to do that. But yeah, I met her playing soccer and I saw her and I felt nothing. It's mm. crazy, right? <laughs> that, that thing, oh, I don't believe in it. Like, love at first sight, I don't believe in that. But mm -hmm. that's not what happened. As a matter of fact, it was the opposite of that. So we sat down. It was like, oh, this is, my wife's name is Eva. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is Eva. Hi, this is Oscar. Oh, nice to meet you. And then I was like, I don't like her. Mm. Like, in my mind, I was like, I don't like her. Wow. And it's not something that she said or, or just the vibe. Hey, Eva, if you're watching this, just skip. <laughs> just, just skip this part, babe. No, she knows this. Oh, I told wow. her this. Oh, wow. And she told me, yeah, I don't like you too. <laughs> because I felt like you had like a like a big ego. Mm. And I kind of did. Like, honestly, at that point in my life, I, I, mm -hmm. I, I was walking around with my chest out. Yeah. And, um, and she didn't like that about me. But um, after that, a couple of days later, they set something up like a, like a house party i guess i could get together mm -hmm. and she was there and i was there and we started talking and i mean i'm talking about we probably started talking like at 11 p.m mm -hmm. at 4 p.m i mean at 4 a.m rather whoa i'm like 
From 4 p.m. to 4 No, 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 no. From like 11 at night uh -huh. to like 4 a.m. in the morning. You we, just me and the couch. Uh -huh. da, 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 this and that. Where you grow up. Da, 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 like, like this. Like we're doing. Like yes. it just felt natural. Mm -hmm. Like it was just a conversation. Yeah. Like I've known her. For a long time. And then I was like, oh, she's cool. Mm -hmm. I, she's a cool girl. Like yeah. I wasn't in love with her. Mm -hmm. Or nothing like that. Of course not. But I was just like, oh, that's cool. I like that. Mm -hmm. The next time, I I was the one that set her up in my friend's house. Mm -hmm. I was like, hey, we should do another get together. You know what <laughs> I mean? And then we, they did. And mm -hmm. then she came and we talked again for Just hours. because you wanted to see her. Yeah. I oh. wanted to keep talking. Mm -hmm. I, I like talking to people. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to keep talking. And that's what we did. And then I liked her more. Mm -hmm. And then eventually it got to a place where I, and one of my best, no, not my best, one of my groomsmen in, in my wedding said this. And it's, it's honest to God. I said, bro. I'm gonna marry her. And she just doesn't know it yet. Like she hasn't realized it yet. Mm. That we're meant to be. Mm -hmm. And I said, and this is, it took, from when I said that, it took like another eight months for her to. Like, After marriage? Huh? After marriage? No, 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 no. Or before you guys. This is married. before, like I'm trying to court her. Like, oh. From when I said that mm -hmm. to my friend, to my buddy, I said, bro. Like, I honestly believe that God made her for me. Mm -hmm. And I can see it clear. Like, I can see it that she is meant to be with me. Mm -hmm. I just need her to see it. Whoa. Yeah. And when she sees it, there's no going back. Mm -hmm. So those eight months, it was me working and working and working and working and working for her to be able to see it. Mm -hmm. And once she saw it, I said, there that's you go. it. I've that's been waiting it. for this moment. You got it. Yeah. I said, that's it. She saw it. She now she sees what I've been seeing. Mm -hmm. And it's probably because I'm older than her or, or something. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, like you said, you're not ready yet. Yeah. Take your time. Enjoy the process. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed the process. Mm -hmm. Right. It was hectic and not yet, but I enjoyed it. Right. Yeah. We still sometimes talk about that. Oh, you remember when this and then? Uh -huh. Yeah. And um she, I, she she needed eight months to get to where I was, mm -hmm. and that's okay. Yeah, that's like fine. I said, take your time. time. Enjoy the process. Don't Enjoy rush it. Breathe. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes when you when you're going through those moments, right, you don't really know the value or the importance of those moments until you get past that stage. Yep. And then when you look back, you're like, wow, mm -hmm. I was enjoying something. Yeah, because that moment prepares you now for some challenges that are going to arise in the future mm. and when that arises you're like we've been through this yeah i don't know what to do now yeah but if you're just going fast just speed 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 and then all of a sudden when something happened now you can't even look back because you don't even know yeah. what happened yeah man that's true wow so after she 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 finally got where you were at, what was the next step the next step we just kept hanging out, hanging out, hanging out. And um, I was, I'm still living with my mother. Um, oh, you still live with your mom? So, yeah, we, I bought, or well, we bought a house. Um, and we, it was the biggest blessing. That's another story, bro. Mm -hmm. It was the biggest blessing. I'm the worst at negotiating. Basically, they said, oh, the house is whatever it was, like, let's say 100,000, right? Uh -huh. And I said, I'll give you two hundred thousand. I'm the worst <laughs> negotiator Bro, ever. This guy, yeah. <laughs> the worst. Just take my money, um, and that's what we did. And but it was the biggest blessing for all of us. And so, um, fast forward, my mom doesn't know about Eva, mm -hmm. right? Because I'm just, hey, mom, I'm going out. Right? Oh yeah, I'm going out. I'm going out. Okay. And then she just sees, out of nowhere. Uh, this girl, <laughs> I just bring her in, yeah. yeah. And then one day, oh yeah, so she she's gonna. Oh no no, I'm lying. I told my 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 wife told me, hey, I need you to talk to your mom so that she knows mm -hmm. like what's going on, you know. Yeah. And I was like, it cannot be a secret, right? <laughs> yeah. But I didn't do that. I was like, of course, babe, I'm gonna do this, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and I did not do that. I I just I just. That's the way I am. I was like, nah, she'll figure it out. Yeah. She'll figure it out. <laughs> um, but no, no. So eventually, slowly, but slowly, because it, it took like two months after that, and mm -hmm. she moved in. Mm -hmm. Oh, she just moved? You guys moved in? She moved with, with my mother and I. Uh-huh. And wow. um, yeah, I mean, that was... That was before you guys got married. Before we got married. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
um that was like i think that was tough for her for for my mom and her you're right yeah my mom just met her hey i'm moving in uh, that was the first time your mom was seen no her. but it's it, the thing is that my mom didn't see me and her hanging out for months and months and oh, months. Oh, so she don't know the backstory. Right. right. She yeah. just like, hi, nice to meet you. And then two weeks later, hi, I'm moving in. It's like, whoa, <laughs> That's son. That's so from Las Vegas. Are you, <laughs> are you sure, son? <laughs> are you sure you're doing the right thing? Right. As she should worry. Yeah, right. Your mom yeah. is always going to, hey, I need, you should think about it. Yeah, this and that. Yeah, and, but she doesn't know. Hey, mom. You know yes, you that connection. Mm -hmm. There's nothing better than that. The mm -hmm. one that I feel, there's nothing better. It doesn't exist. Yeah, there's nothing better than that. Mm -hmm. Um, so she moved in, um, and yeah, we've been there, man. She's now she loves my mom, and my mom sees her as a daughter, mm -hmm. and um, and we're happy. Life so is good. how how do your mom get past that? Do you try to help her out, let her know that this the woman of your dreams, or you just like? Well, you figure it out. <laughs> the second, yeah, the latter. That's exactly what I did. I just don't get along. Don't get along somehow. And I just stand back. And, that's what I did. Honestly, it, it just happened that it worked out. But yeah, you, you could be playing with fire, mm -hmm. right? Because you know, my mom has a very strong personality. Yeah, and my wife has a very strong personality. And sometimes when you when you have that in one household, yeah, it can create you know like uh, create uh, fireworks. Ha yes, havoc. Yeah, but. My wife, she grew up in her country, Guatemala, mm -hmm. and she her she grew up under her like her grandparents' supervision mm -hmm. in like old school, mm -hmm. right? In old school, they always respect the elders. Elder, yeah. So my, my, no even what. though there's sometimes that she's had that um, she's been a little frustrated with some things, and she's always respected my mother no matter what. Mm -hmm. She just because that's her elder. Not mm -hmm. only her, not only is she my mother, but it's an elder and she respects that to mm -hmm. the fullest. Because mm -hmm. sometimes now you have people that they don't care about that. Mm -hmm. now, the youth today, yeah, they don't like, they don't respect their elders. They'll be like, it's either your mom or me. Exactly. You yeah. gotta choose. It's gonna be a competition yeah. now. But yeah. she she has never yeah. done that. Never. It yeah. it wouldn't even it wouldn't even go through her head. To so to do or say or ask something of that. Yeah, me. that's that's a blessing though because you know it's tough you know for a lady to come and let's just assume you get married, and then you bring a lady who don't get along with your mom. That's tough. Oh, that would be horrible. That's tough. I'm a mama's boy. Oh really? Oh, I'm a mama's boy. So that would be. I would never want to be there in that situation like that. Uh -huh. I would never want. So there. when you say you're mama's boy, let's just assume right. Your mom want to see you. And your wife want to see you, right? In, in, at the same time, who are you going to see? I'll see you both because I live with them. <laughs> no, no, no. Let's just assume <laughs> that are somewhat totally different. Are you going to see your mom or you see your wife? At the same time? At the like same they time. They want to see you at the same time. Hey, I know my mom longer, so I got to be with my mom. No, <laughs> no you know. Um, I'm putting you in the spot now. Your wife is watching. She's like, she's right, she's right now. She's but, listening. She want to, yeah, you know. <laughs> No, I, I would probably, you know, my mom, she's, like I said, an elder, so she would understand. Dang. Hey, mom, yeah, I'm going uh, to be there tomorrow. Uh -huh. yeah, me and I were doing something today. Very so important, I, bro. 100%. Not only, she would, of course, son. Yeah. Uh, uh, let me know what time so I can have something yeah. ready for you to eat or something. That's what yeah. she would say. 100%. Your wife should be number one, honestly, brother. Your wife should be, no, not like you're going to neglect your mother. No, your mom is always going to be your mom, regardless. And you cannot let anyone come between you and your mother. But at the same time, the Bible says you're going to leave your father and mother and you cling onto your wife and you become one. Mm. So you have to know that. You know, sometimes people make these mistakes, though. Your wife wants to see you and your mom wants to see you at the same time. And you go with your mom and you mm. leave your wife there. Yeah. So your wife got to be competing with your attention with your mother. No. You, Not a good sign, brother. You can't. I, was saying, I know, like, people are going to come at me. I know my mom is going to be watching this, but... <laughs> I might get a phone call after this episode. <laughs> <laughs> but it's all good. But that's the truth, though. Yeah. Honestly. Being honest. Yeah, it's, yeah, that's the truth. You have to go with... You know, sometimes people, especially African parents, will be like, oh, no, you got to go with your mother. Blah, blah, blah. Like, come on, mommy. Yeah. You have to follow your wife first. And then, you know, sometimes... But at the same time, you got to be wise to understand that sometimes maybe your wife maybe want to use you or something. You also got to be wise to know that, oh, if it's something like emergency or something, you know, mm. 
you gotta be there for your mother. You can't just let oh, them off. Of course. Yeah, man. You can't no. just say, oh no, because now you gotta no. No, no. you gotta be wise to to make a wise decision sometimes, you know. But if it's not something urgent, like your mom wanna see you, wife wanna see you, definitely go with your wife. Yeah. Definitely go with your wife. <laughs> because yeah, you're like you said, you're creating a new family. Yeah, right? a new family. And that's another thing, because you know, people think that when someone get married, uh, I know I'm gonna rub some feathers, but yeah. You know, people think that when so when uh, someone get married, they bring in two um two families together. Mm. You know? But that's not it. When when someone is getting married, they're creating a third family. Ah. Uh. Yeah. So you gotta respect those you gotta respect the newly wedded couple to take their time to know each other, know, enjoy the moment. Because when people keep intruding, they're like, this guy is supposed to do it. I've been married for this number of years. Da, 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 da. Yeah, yeah. Now yeah, you yeah. don't desi- you don't design your home the way you want to do it. Now you're using any someone's blueprint for your life. And it's tough because sometimes you get problems, 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 problems every day. And you wonder why. Sometimes someone might just like your relative just walk in straight to the kitchen. Now that's not right. You have to understand that. You can't just walk into someone's, like someone just got married and you, because you think you're the brother or the sister, you just walk, you come into the house, you don't even knock or greet anything, you just open the door, pop up, go to the straight of the kitchen, check the pot and see, is there food right. in here? That's not good, bro. That's not. Here's the solution. <laughs> if your mom wants to see you and your wife wants to see you, uh-huh. take your wife yeah. to go see your mom. <laughs> That's what you gotta do, bro. <laughs> no, you see your wife first and then you ask her, yeah. say, hey, babe, and we go see my mom. She there wanted you to go. see me too, you know? There you go. Make her feel like, oh, she's part of it. Mm. But if you just said, oh, babe, let's go see my mom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah, you just got to make her know, oh, baby, can we go see mm. my mom? You know, she'll be like, oh, yeah. Now she feels like, oh, she's part of it. She's part of it. And yeah. she's also, like, contributing to the decision. Yeah. yeah. And that that you avoid friction. Mm. Because the moment you say, oh, I want to go see my mom. Or let's go see my mom. And she's like, oh, wait a minute. Yeah. Wait a minute, guy. Am I part of this? Or uh, just the one you just said? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They start yeah. thinking. But when they know, like, oh, can we go? And I'm like, oh, yeah, we can. And then I'm part of this. Yeah. So we're together. Yeah, man. That's a- So how have marriage been? You know, I'm, 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 I want to learn because, you yeah. know, in the future, I'm going to do the yeah. same. I'm going to get married. So I want to learn from you. When you got married, how was that experience like? You're like, bro, I've, I got a woman of my dreams. That's exactly right. So what do I do next? Marriage, you know, some people say, I just got a text the other day, oh, congratulations on six years of being married. I heard the five the first five years are the hardest. I said, No, bro. No, not for me. It's of course, we're not the perfect couple or anything like that. Yeah. We're not perfect people. Right, we have problems. We have, you know, challenges. Yeah, challenges. Problems. Then, then you have good days, bad days, yeah, and etc. But I've never. It's been like, oh, I can't do this anymore. Mm-hmm. No, but you gotta understand, my wife mm-hmm. is my best friend, and you hear that, and like in movies, no, like I love hanging out with her. That's how it's supposed to be, man. Like, if I love watching TV with her, I, bro, she doesn't even know. But sometimes when she's asleep, <laughs> it's because she's so funny. But she's asleep and I just like watching her. Oh, dang. She's so, she, she looks she's so beautiful. So beautiful. Sleep. Yeah, yeah. She's so pretty. Yeah. I don't tell her those things. And I'm like, dang, look at her. She's, she's so like, beautiful. she's yearning now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or um, it's a bunch of things that she does. And uh-huh. I'm like, ah, she's the best. I'm so lucky. Oh, I'm lucky. I'm, no, like, I, that's my biggest blessing is. Mm-hmm. Having my mother, mm-hmm. like the, the person that she is, that's one of my biggest blessings. Mm-hmm. Having my wife in my life and and for her to be able to, after eight months, see what I saw, mm-hmm. that's a, the biggest blessing. And then my three dogs, bro. I, they're my best friends, mm-hmm. right? My, honestly, all mm-hmm. of those people are, are what make me me. Mm-hmm. And um, of course, you can add to the list, my brother, my sister, et cetera, but... Yeah, marriage has not been hard. And if, if marriage is hard for you, something's wrong. Mm-hmm. Figure it out. I'm not saying, oh, you're not compatible. No, yeah, but no. there's something wrong and mm-hmm. you, you should work on it because um, it should feel honestly 
it should be a, a smooth transition because, and, and let me tell you this, a lot of people, that's, that's like the, the question to ask is, what is love? Mm -hmm. What is love, right? Everybody has their own yeah. definition. Mm -hmm. I think, to me, to Oscar mm -hmm. Ayala, mm -hmm. love is fun mm -hmm. and it's not this serious thing. Like, it's not this serious thing. 85% of the time, if I'm in a room with my wife, we're joking about each other. Mm -hmm. we're, we're laughing and gossiping. We love gossip. <laughs> we love gossip. <laughs> and we love just like joking on each other. Mm -hmm. Sometimes like, oh, you do this, 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 and we're just laughing. And and that's why I enjoy my time with her because I don't see it as, I got to spend time with my wife. I'm like, let, me, like let me hear the tea. <laughs> let me get that gossip. Let me, I got a good joke. I got to tell her and, uh -huh. and this you and that. Prep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes I do things. On purpose that so that she calls him out. You did, and she mm -hmm. it's just that back and forth. Mm -hmm. I really enjoy it. So mm -hmm. she's genuinely my, my best friend or one of my best friends, right? Um, and yeah, I love marriage. Like that, yeah. Being man. married is the best. So I we'll talk once you're married. Yeah, and I think you're gonna tell me like the same thing, mm -hmm. right? Um, and if you don't. We'll talk about it behind the cameras. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we can't even talk about yeah. it. Yeah. Who knows? We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm glad you said that, though. Like, you, sometimes something might be wrong. You can't just say, oh, it's not it. You know, this world of options. People yeah. just think, oh, I got options. So if this guy is not talking well to me, I'm just going to forget about him. Nah. And go to another person. But the thing is, you never know. That might be the person you who you were supposed to spend the rest of your life with. Yeah. And then you miss that opportunity and you go to a bomb. Yeah. The, someone who is going to abuse you and do crazy things to you. And you're like, dang, I had gold. You know, you never know the value of something until you lose it. And yeah. then you realize that, dang, boy. Yeah. I would say you're completely right. Have you seen these shows like on TikTok and YouTube? Of, they're popping the balloons when... It's like a dating show, mm -hmm. and then they oh come out, and then as, if they don't like something, they pop the balloon. Yes, yeah, I've seen Bro. some Nigerian show like that. And uh -huh. then I'm like, what are you doing? Because <laughs> you don't even know the person. You're literally yeah. only going off. Because sometimes I'm sorry, I popped the balloon because I don't like your shoes. Really? <laughs> Give them a chance so because was, yeah. you could be that. That's the love of your life, mm -hmm. and you're not even giving them a chance mm -hmm. because of something that they're wearing. Yes, or the outfit is not good. No, like, don't yeah. do that. Don't yeah. do that. That's dumb. That, yeah. That's a bad way of thinking. Yeah, but the thing is, like, this social, the world of social media just confused everybody. And, you know, like, guys now want this cute model, stuff like that, the stuff they see on the Instagram. And and that's that's not how life or relationship is. Yeah. All those things you see, fine, so good, that's not it. Like, the character, what's the content of the character? Right. Is it the best? Is it so beautiful as they are outside like that? The outward appearance should never be like the hundred percent influence in your decision making. A hundred percent, no. But yeah, it, it can be. Oh, hundred like, percent. Obviously, everybody want a fine looking damn self. You don't want to right. look at wake up in right. the morning and like, oh my god, <laughs> what did I do? <laughs> I should I should have done. It. No, you have to be attracted to yeah, the partner. Gotta, yeah, of course. But it, it don't have to be like a hundred percent. Like oh. Based on this person's um, physical no, no, no. outward look, no, no, no. I'm going in for this. No, no. And the, the unfortunate thing is, people do that. Yeah. That, people do that. That's very popular now. Yeah, people do that. Like, and oh, this doesn't so, happen. Yeah, she's just, oh, she's so fine. I don't need to know. When yeah. She's so good. She's yeah. good. And then now you realize the content of her character, if you want to read it from a scale of 1 to 10, it's a negative 5. Not even up Imagine. to 1. That's and you're crazy. like, damn, no. bro. No. How did I do this? I know there's some ladies who put a lot of makeup, a lot of makeup. And you meet a lady in the club and she's so beautiful. <laughs> she's one person and in then, the club and, and, then, and then And then you, you say, oh, let me go do, you do one night stand. You take her, you guys go home, blah, blah, and then when you wake up in the morning, the, wake up, the makeup is out. And you see her face, you're like, Jesus! <laughs> <laughs> it's someone else. Yeah, no, no, I don't like that either. Yeah. My, and my girl, the, my wife doesn't yeah. like that. She... Some girls too much stuff. Yeah, too so much. keep it simple. Yeah, man. You know? Keep it simple and have your criteria as a man of values. Like, hey, what do you have value in a lady? You know, the content of a character is more important than an outward appearance. But uh, guys, we have to be attracted to you physically. You know, like me, Afri like as an African man, I like it outward too. But I also got to see the content of your character. Mm. Like, how are you? And another thing for me, cooking. I love homemade meals. You cook? I I can cook too. 
but I want my girl to be able to cook some ah. good meal. Yeah, you know, yeah, I can cook, but I also want my girl. Like you know, I live like I live alone. Yeah. So I cook most of the times alone, mm. but when I got my girlfriend, she started cooking. Oh, man. I was like, dang, bro. I just love home meal meal. <laughs> That's like, man, when you have somebody who's there for you and someone who truly cares and appreciates you for who you are, it's a different feeling. Mm. It's a different, total different feeling. And you realize that, bro, like despite my um this thing, my flaws, this person is still there and appreciates me for who I am. Mm. It's tough. You know, it's really tough. I'm going deep now, but yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, but let's, let me yeah. just tell you this. Um, I feel that if my wife if my wife was here and she was, I would still be this person. Mm-hmm. And that's important to remember. I I used to be in 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 past relationships. Not that I've had a bunch of them, but um, where I was one person with my friends mm-hmm. and another person with. Um, with your significant other yeah. and you shouldn't do that yeah. you should be able to be yourself yeah. with them yeah. and she's the same way with me my wife she's herself and mm-hmm. and if if she's around her friends she she's she doesn't act differently yeah right and i have friends bro that they're with me and they're talking all this crazy stuff but with the wife they're like <sighs> exactly <laughs> <clears throat> and you're like Whoa. What I happened? the same guy. Yeah. And you see them be running their mouths. I'm these. I can yeah. Do it. Uh-huh. Like, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So find someone that you can be yourself with. Yeah. Love is fun. Have mm. fun with it. You, you, know? you don't have to be uptight. Bro. No. No, yeah. no, no, no. You can find someone like that. Mm-hmm. But you're not. Long term, you're not going to be happy. Yeah. Because you're going to be like, oh, I can never be myself. Yeah. And no, just be yourself. And you got to go to the bar sometimes to go hang out with dudes yeah. because they're drinking and talking the way you want to talk. <laughs> and go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Be yourself. Be yourself. That's why your selection process got to be. I mean, sometimes you, a lot of, we do make mistakes and everybody makes mistakes, but you have to have like a criteria and some values, standards in place that you know, mm. oh, this is the kind of person I want to attract in my life because this is who I am. And does the person accept you for who you are? Or you must you try to pretend every single time for the person to accept you. If that's the case, why are you even going in? Mm. You have to think about that. Yeah. Like don't force yourself into something saying, oh, this person is going to change. If they do not change to get you, they're not going to change to keep you. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Now, and people think, oh, God is going to work a miracle. <laughs> Someone, you can only change when you decide to change. Right. Someone is not going to make you change. Exactly. They might try, drag you. Hey, Oscar, come here, come here, come here. But he's like, nah, nah, nah. You'll change when you're ready. Yes, you change yeah. when you decide to change. Because no matter what someone says, you change on your own account. Right. No one is going to make you change. Exactly. The person might influence you a little bit. And then you hear something that is, and then like, you start thinking about some things. You know, he might say something that triggers you. And you start reflecting, but you are going to make the ultimate decision. Mm. Yeah, to change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why we have wheels. God gave you power to decide. That's why He never forced right. salvation onto you. He's like, yeah, bro, yeah. you decide. Do you want to come with me or do you want to go with the devil? You choose. You, if you go with the devil, it's your choice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's why the power of choice is so important, brother. Yeah. And you decide what route you want to take. And if you make a mistake, What's the decision? Always think about the consequence before making the decision. But most of the times, people don't think about the consequence. It's hard to do sometimes. They just make the decision. You forget. Yeah. And, and then, sometimes you forget to, you know, put lay it down on the table and say, "What well, if I do this?" Is sometimes yeah. in in the moment. In the you moment, like, you know, ah, and if you think about the consequence before you make the decision, and you know you can live with it, and when things go south and that happen, you can live with it. And making the decision become easy. When you know that you can live with the consequence. Mm. But when you don't know anything so uncertain and you do it and all of a sudden you're so miserable, you don't know what to do. Oh, Lord, man. Coming back to you, Oscar, we've been flying around. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. We're talking. We're right <laughs> Let me come back to you. So, you, you, know, you when you got married, it was kind of, you had some challenges, um, but you tried to figure it out, make it fun, just make it lively as you are. 
But I want to go because, you know, sometimes you go through some tough moments, you know, mm. and you don't really realize that this person that I'm vibing with today who might have this kind of problems or have this kind of challenge. And when that happened, how do you react? Have you ever had such moment where something happened, like a misunderstanding, and you guys are trying to, you guys kind of misunderstood each other, and it took a while for you guys to get back on the same track? How was that feeling like, and how did you get past that moment? Um, There hasn't been many, to be honest. It's... No, no, I'm not saying many. I just want to know, like, the, a one particular scenario that how do you guys try to overcome get that? Get past that? Yeah. Very important. We're both similar in that sense of, okay, I'll go downstairs, you stay here, and just kind of give yourself time. Mm -hmm. I think the message of this podcast, time, 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 breathe, 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 mm -hmm. right? Um, and just kind of keep to yourself. And eventually, the same day, bro, because we're very compatible yeah. people, mm -hmm. is I go upstairs and I, it, it, if I, I throw a joke, uh -huh. once, once you're... The anger is passed or whatever, right? Because mm. it passes. Yeah. Right? When you get hungry, usually you... <laughs> <laughs> um, it passes. And yeah. then I throw a joke or something. If she, she if she doesn't say anything, she, she oh, she's play. still mad. Yeah. She's still mad. Okay. Okay. Let me just ignore that and then just throw another joke. And that's the way I do it. Okay. Uh -huh. that's, I'm not saying that's the best way for everybody. Mm -hmm. But to me, love is fun. So, And eventually, I... She cracks a smile or something like I you got get it. her, yeah. I got it. Okay, mm -hmm. now we can move forward, and then you can talk. And then I say, I like to say a lot of things. She's a very emotional person, so mm -hmm. um, a lot of times, um, and I'm emotional too. So it's sometimes it's my job since I'm older than her mm -hmm. is okay. Sit, let's talk. Mm -hmm. Calm down. Yeah. Everything's okay. At the end of the day, I love. And I said, if she was here, she would be able. To, oh, she, he's he's said that. I love you. Everything's okay. Uh -huh. Just tell me what's wrong. Mm -hmm. Okay, but don't like your tone and mm -hmm. no, no, calm yeah, down. Yeah. Come, it's just me and you. Mm -hmm. Okay, I love you. Everything's okay. Just talk, talk to me. Mm -hmm. No, because this and that and this and this. Okay, but we can do this because, man, I do believe it. We're if something is wrong, you try to find a solution. Mm -hmm. That's the way our mind works. Yeah, but lady want a conversation. Yeah, the, and it, it, it was more an emotional side mm -hmm. of it. And yeah. you know, because we're like, oh, why don't you just do this? Yeah. Why don't you that, do that? that, 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 that. And they don't, they don't work like that. And yeah. you, we have to understand mm -hmm. that we're just different beings, right? Mm -hmm. And um, but yeah, at the end of the day, if you and your partner have any problems, talk it out. Give yourself time. Mm -hmm. Talk it out, and just be humble because mm -hmm. you're a team. Mm -hmm. Be humble, and sometimes. It's gonna take you admitting that you're wrong, even if you're not wrong. Yeah. That's part of being married. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I just so I, so you guys have never slept back to back. Like you sleep on the facing your backwards and just sleep. No, we do that, <laughs> but that, but not because we're angry. I just I just like sleeping, sleeping on my back like that. No, no. Um, I don't oh. think honestly we've never slept apart like that. I mean, we're, we're, you know, we're slept apart if she goes to, to you know, with family and, and to the beach or something. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to go. But not because of being angry. Mm -hmm. No. Like, oh, I slept in the couch. and No, no, no. At the end of the day, you can always figure something out. Mm -hmm. um, and just so talk. So communication, no matter what. A hundred percent. I mean, mm -hmm. that. but also, and that's easier for us, right? Yeah. Because we're good at communicating with people. We're mm -hmm. good at talking to people. Not everybody's like that. Mm -hmm. Because there's people that, like... Yeah. Mm, like, you're doing good, bro. Mm, like, they don't like talking. They don't like... So it's going to be harder for you. And you have to find an alternative to that. Mm -hmm. Like, everybody has their own way. My way for yeah. Oscar is doing that because that's the type of person that she is and I am. We're just, like, talking. So this is a question I always like to ask married man. Serious question. Think about it. Okay. Have you ever thought about the possibility of having another person? I didn't say it going to have another person just thinking about the possibility of having another person like another another girl wife? yeah no <laughs> never why <laughs> honestly so uh -huh. let me tell you something i have I've, I've had a couple of other relationships in my life mm -hmm. 
And when you have your first love, it's not love. Mm -hmm. You think it is. Yeah. And then, then you find another one. Mm -hmm. And you're like, oh, now this is love. Uh -huh. That wasn't love. This yeah. is love. But when I met my wife, it was like, what is this? Mm -hmm. This is something else. It's different. Oh, it's different. Yeah. This is, it, you can't even compare it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, this is it. Yeah. So that's why I'm telling you that I was so clear when I told my friends. And I, I said, bro, I promise you I'm going to marry her. Like, mm -hmm. I'm not, I promise you I'm mm -hmm. going to marry her. Mm -hmm. it, but it goes to what you said. Sometimes you need to be ready. Mm -hmm. She wasn't ready. Yeah. It took her those eight months. And she's, she likes to say it took her two years. It took two years. No, it did not take two years. Mm -hmm. It took like eight months, okay? And um, for her to be ready mm -hmm. and for her to see what I saw. Mm -hmm. So, no. Ever since, in short, ever since I I discovered that type of love mm -hmm. that I didn't know it, it existed. Because, mind you, I thought I knew love, mm -hmm. right? Oh, I know love. I was in a relationship for five years or whatever. No, mm. there was nothing that compared to this love, yeah. to what this that I had with her, this mm. companionship, this team that we built. There's nothing. So no, ever since, and not ever since I got married, ever since I, I started dating my mm. wife, mm -hmm. nothing of, oh, what if I was with da-da-da mm. or this and that? <laughs> no, no, uh. no one mm -hmm. in this world yeah will be able to do what she does, she does. for me yeah. no one and i i honest to god believe that mm -hmm. that i can meet a hundred more people and they wouldn't bring to the table what she brings mm -hmm. as far as personality and the human being that she is and yeah. how she cares for me and always wants the best for me and how she jokes around with me and mm -hmm. how she's an animal lover with me and, and just everything her jokes her smiles mm -hmm everything she's the perfect package because i honestly believe and we talked i think shortly about this once uh that she was she's custom made for me mm -hmm. and i believe that i was custom made for her wow yeah beautiful that's good man that's good that's good. you know when you meet someone that you guys just vibe together and it's so easy to have a good conversation even in the hard times when you're going through a lot of trials and tribulation having someone with your partner you guys are going to partner together to try to see how we can go through, like overcome this challenge or try to get past this moment. That's really important and it's good because a lot of times not everyone go through that and have a good partner. Yeah. You might be married to someone and all of a sudden you realize it's your competitor. They're mm. competing with you. And you're like, I told we in this together. Yeah. We're supposed to be partners. A team. We're supposed to be team. We're supposed yeah. to be friends. Yeah. So why are we trying to fight and one another trying to make sh uh, like I'm better and you're not? That's no. not good. It's not healthy. Mm -mm. So when I hear you say that, man, I'm like, yeah, there's hope. Especially for people who divorce every time, there's hope. And people who are looking up or listening to this episode and they, they've been discouraged about marriage because of the divorce rate. Just know that there's hope. People are going through this thing and they're surviving and they're trying to do some create some impact in their lives and do some use principles. You know, at the end of the day, communication is very important. That's why I always say that love does not make a relationship work. It does not. That it all boils down to knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. Mm -hmm. Without these three things, it does not work. Knowledge, the right information. Understanding, comprehending that information. And then wisdom is the application. So you get the information and you understand that information and then you apply it. And it got to be principle. That is true information, not facts. Because a lot of times people focus on fact. Fact is just a, a fact is just a present description of things. It's just a present description. So the fact you're here right now, that's a fact. Right. But the truth is you're going to be back going home very soon. Yeah. So you have to focus on principle, something that's never changed. And... At times, people focus on facts and they realize that things are not moving the way they want it to move. But that change. Focus on principles. What are some of the things that are not going to change? And apply that. In a relationship, you know, relation, um, communication will always be there, no matter what. How do you learn how to communicate? 
you good talking to your your bros in the bar. <laughs> Be here, yeah, man. He scored a touchdown. I love that guy, man. The Baltimore Ravens are good. Yeah. But when you get home, then like, oh, your wife was like, hey, babe, how you doing today? Good. good. <laughs> yeah. 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 And now you can't even go beyond good. Yeah. Even to ask like, hey, baby, how you doing too? Yeah. How was your day? What can I do to make, put a smile on your face? You know, just make it jovial. And then she'll be like, oh, uh-huh. that's good, man. Yeah. I want to, I want you to try this out. Okay. So on your way home, you know, this episode will not be out till Wednesday. Okay. But on your way home, right? On the highway or anything. Just put your your hazard light on okay. and then park on the side road. Cut a tree. It might be in your neighborhood or anything. Just cut like a little tree or something. And then you go and give it to your wife. You're like, hey, baby, I was, th- I was thinking about you on my way home. Take it. Okay. A tree? Then, like bark? No, you can cut like any flower or anything. Oh, just gotcha, cut. Gotcha, I mean, gotcha. don't buy. Just cut. Like okay. a flower or anything. Just cut it. So you wanted me to cut a tree down? Oh, no, 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 no. Just <laughs> cut like a flower. Just a little bit. Yeah, I got you. Like, hey, babe. I was thinking about you on my way home. Yeah. And then let me know her reaction. Today, I'll be waiting. Like on your way home. Okay. Just cut it and then you're like, hey, I was thinking about you on my way home. And then let me know her reaction and how she's going to keep that thing. Okay. She's going to blush. She'll be like, oh. Because you've never done that. She'll no, I've like, never done that. Yeah, she'll be like, oh. And she's very sentimental. She, bro, my wife, <laughs> she's so <laughs> random, bro. It's because she's yeah. the best. Bro, sometimes I open cabinets, uh-huh. like, like drawers. What's up with these rocks? And she's like, oh, that's the rock from the time we went to the beach in <laughs> Key West. And like she keeps like these little things. Yes, and I, or like the moat. Like to me, I'm like, oh, just throw them away. She's like, no. And she has like a collection of some random rocks. Oh, that's the one when we went to Miami for the first time. And then you, you remember you took me to the beach. And, and I was like, yeah. So uh, if yeah. I give her that, yeah. she'll probably like <laughs> save it for the rest of her life or something. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, what she is. Because that's, you no, know, women are so emotional. Oh, yeah, yeah. And they want to see that affection. You have to show them affection. Those little, little steps. Like affection is not money, man. Just going to buy fancy yeah. stuff. It's just the little things, like just the creativity, the thought, and the effort. That's what I appreciate the most, man. Yeah. And when you do stuff like that, you realize that, oh, your relationship is getting better and better and better. And you got to learn. Learn. Don't go to uh, Instagram and try to find these people who are saying they're, so, they are relationship experts and they don't, they've nah. never been married or nothing. Nah. Or they've been in five um, different marriages. Now, nah. divorce, divorce, divorce. That's not a good role model. Learn from people who have been married for like 50 years, 20 years, 30 years. Yeah, exactly. 10 years because they have been going through the process and they know what it is and they know the trials and tribulations that come to you. They're going to give you real talk. Yeah. Real talk. It, not it, something you want to hear. It. Yeah, they're going to give you real talk. Yeah. And that, from that moment, you're like, whoa. Some might even tell you, take time, bro. Don't, don't rush into this thing yeah. because you think everyone yeah, yeah. is getting married. Yeah. No. Because it's not easy. But you have to know how to handle this tough this conversation. Handle those tough times. And that's how you move, man. I would say that's true. So uh, I, I bumped into a friend of mine a couple of months ago. An, an old friend from like high school. Mm-hmm. And then he was trying to give me some advice about love and stuff like that. <laughs> the guy, my guy, you've been divorced twice. <laughs> my guy. So, uh, of course, I'm not going to. You're I'm not, not going to tell him that. No, face, no yeah. because I'm, I'm respectful, yeah. you know. It's probably coming from a good place. Mm-hmm. But in my head, internally, I'm like, yeah, I man. can't listen to a You're person a good that. Role model. Yeah. yeah, like if if it's my grandparents or someone like that, they oh we've been married fifty years or something like that. Yeah. You want to listen to those people yeah. because they will teach you things and mm-hmm. and um, techniques and, and stuff like that. Because yeah. of course, love isn't. I mean, marriage isn't easy. Yeah, it's not. It's easier when you're so compatible mm-hmm. like me, but it still work, yeah, right? it still it's still work. Yeah, it still works. It still works because it's two people, yeah. you know, with the good and the bad and trying to form one team. Mm-hmm. And that's not always easy. So there will be tough days, but just talk it out. Yeah. Breathe, 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 take your time. Take your time. Everything's Don't rush okay. it. Yeah. Yeah, because marriage is the only school that they give you the certificate before you start learning. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. true. They give you a certificate. Yeah, oh, right. yeah, you qualify. Yes. Because true. when you want to drive, you have to go through, the, you have to go write the, the drive test. The, and then you... You got to go to driving school. Yeah, go to after that, you go to driving school. 
before you go do the road exam exactly. and then you pass the road exam before you get a certificate but yeah. marriage you just go sign it yeah like, hey you got congratulations it. Yeah, yeah, yeah and then you're like whoa that's true is this an exam yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you don't know that yeah, yeah. and then you learn yeah, what you it's learn. like to be married yeah then you like learn. oh man this course 101 that's yeah. crazy <laughs> no it, bro I, and uh, looking at you Mm-hmm. with your significant other mm-hmm. your fiance yeah you're blessed because i honestly feel that not everybody has a chance to meet their soulmate mm-hmm. we probably i know i've met my soulmate yes. and from what you've told me yeah I've met you met your soulmate, soulmate too. yeah we're blessed so like i said always focus on the positives don't focus on the the one negative focus on the positives we're blessed mm-hmm. not everybody people go their whole life without meeting their soulmate yeah that's true so imagine we've we've been able to do that so mm-hmm. that's amazing bro that's cool that's true man and you have to also have to like just give some people some knowledge like hey it's not that hard it might be tough sometimes but just know that it's just for a while there's always a season for everything yeah that's summer winter fall spring there might be a season in your life that you might go through some stuff just that's it off like hey yeah it's it's summer it's winter, it's spring, it's fall. I can overcome this. Yeah. And when you know that it's not going to be forever, bam, you put your mind on another level or another dimension. I can handle this and we're going to become better as a team, as a unit. Always know it's a unit. It's not one person, one, sh- one person show. Mind you, if you're just doing it, everything yourself, you're going to get tired, bro. Yeah. But yeah, you know, yeah. like, it's a unit. Yeah. Like, we're a team. We're doing this together. You know, sometimes you might make a decision and even though you make it alone, like just let her know, like, hey, I did this stuff and just just yeah, her input, like what she thinks about it. Even though sometimes she might be like, Oh yeah, you did that without me. Sometimes things happen, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so communication. Just get, yeah, you just talk it out and yeah. move on. That's it. You know, sometimes it's not good. Like I'm not perfect, but I'm not perfect. And no one is perfect. But we're just learning this thing. We're students of life. We just learn and we move on. Just learn, 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 learn. And we try to see how we can work together to improve ourselves. Yeah. And that's how a relationship got to be. Like, I'm I'm in a relationship. And you have to think, like, hey, what am I shipping in? Mm. It's not money, bro. Like, it's not money. People think about money, money, money. But it's not all about money. What are you shipping in a relationship? Are you shipping in comfort? Are you shipping in... Like, um, this is strength. Like, what are you shipping in? Are you trying to, when the person is sad, how do you make them feel? Mm. You know, people don't care about what you do. Like, all these things, like giving them money or anything. Think about how you make them feel. That's the most important thing. Like, when you do this thing, how do I feel? Like, you see, all everybody is trying, chasing after money. They're not after the money. They're after that emotion that they're going to feel after they get the they money. Get, yeah, yeah. yeah, like the we, are all, we are all after emotions. Everybody's chasing emotions. Right. We're chasing feelings. Yeah, 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 yeah. But at the end of the day, you have to step back. According to everybody, they're the most important person on earth. Right. And if you treat them that way, like the most important person on earth, you, you're going to have a happy life. Mind you, it's not easy. But you have to know that, hey, bro, I know how I am and I know how I want to be treated. Let me be an example. Just shut everything down. Like, this is what I want, this is what I want, and then be that person. And you're going to be good. Don't say, oh, I want this for my partner. I want this and that. And you're not that person. Be a representation of your message. Be that. And you realize that, damn, she reflects that. Mm. That's it. That's it, man. Move me. Oh, we've been rolling, yeah, brother. A lot of lessons, a lot of lessons here. <laughs> I've been learning from you, man. I've been taking yeah. notes. It's, I hope you guys are taking notes too, just because this conversation is valuable. You know, I didn't even know we we're gonna go to. We're go, it's gonna be about relationship. Yeah. But as we're talking, I'm like, yeah, it's important because of people course. go through a lot of stuff and they're gonna learn from your experience and obviously from the knowledge and wisdom you're impacting them with. It's very important, especially nowadays where everything is just so wow. People yeah. don't know what to take and they're just taking everything. Like, oh God, oh God. You're emotionally drained because you're taking a lot of things and you don't know which one is right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything just contradicts and you're like, oh, 
please follow principles and subscribe to the Brown's Brown's. Hey, subscribe, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, and share. share. <laughs> Hola, amigas, amigos. Hola, como estamos, como estamos. <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. Oh, Lord. So coming back to you, I know you've been married and stuff like that. And you know, another thing is this: like when you get married, before you get married, you always have this conversation, right? Like, hey, um, I want to have kids. Um, how many kids you want to have? Blah 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 blah. Do you have the conversation before marriage or after marriage? After marriage. Oh, after marriage. We did. Oh, yeah. really? After not, marriage. Not that you should do that, but mm -hmm. we did. And she she brought it up. My wife brought it up. I'm mm -hmm. not. Um, <laughs> I just kind of live in the moment, man. I yeah. was like, ah. And then she was like, hey, we should talk about this. And um, yeah, we, I mean, we definitely want to have kids, mm -hmm. you know, when you're when you're ready. Oh, when you're ready. When you're and, ready. But that's very important because, you know, don't try to work. And one thing I like about the Latino community is you guys produce. <laughs> A lot of kids. <laughs> you guys produce, man. Nah. Hey, I wish, you know, my dream is to have twins. I just uh -huh. want twins and uh -huh. that's it. And yeah. we could, because I have twins in my family, and she has twins in her family. Yeah. There's a possibility, man. It's going to be a triplet. Hey, oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> hey, you know, let me triplet. tell you something. It's I be always had this idea. I had to tell this to all my friends uh -huh. that, I'm not that I'm going to be a bad father, mm -hmm. but kids hate me. Why? Bro, I, I think they just see me maybe as a giant kid or something, because uh -huh. my, that's my personality uh -huh. is like that. Not that, but my... All the kids that I meet, they they don't. I don't have that. You gonna it, figure it out, man. That's what people tell my yeah. friends. Are like, no, once they're yeah. your kids, yes, you figure it out. They're gonna like. They're gonna love you. Yeah, bro. gonna figure it out because you, as a parent, because now you become, you're gonna become a parent. You're gonna try to learn to try to make sure that your kids grow up in the right way. So you're not just gonna let them lose because oh, they say, yeah. Not. So you're gonna try to learn some things. You know, being a father for the first time is new to everybody, you know, man. because you don't know what to do. You got to try to I'm land. Scared, yeah. <laughs> don't bother. It's coming, man. We're going to come for the baby shower. <laughs> hey, you going to discipline your kids? Oh, yeah. You believe in that? Yeah. Yeah? I'm African, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you learned like that. <laughs> yeah, me too. Me too. Yeah, that's I'm good. African. We're yeah. disciplined. Yeah, that's good. Like, you got some ass whooping. You see that? Sometimes you need that. <laughs> oh, I, yeah. didn't, I didn't receive that from my oh, parents. Yeah. They just used to pull my, my ear. Yeah, but my, I think my, my brother, most of all, and my sister did uh, get oh, that. No, no, no. But that's, sometimes you need no, that. No, no. Sometimes the kids, they, yeah. they want that. You know, like, you don't appreciate it in the moment. But when you grow up, you're like, I really needed that ass whooping. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not 100%. Yeah, that's true, man. Yeah. Sometimes it brings you back and try it. Honestly. Yeah. yeah, and that's that's a good thing. So yeah, you have that conversation, and the reason why I ask you that is because a lot of times people don't really have the conversation, you know, and they get married. After a while, they like they realize that one person did not want kids. Ah, <laughs> no. So we both knew we wanted kids. Yeah. We didn't know when mm -hmm. and how many. Yeah, that's so. The thing. That's a conversation that we had afterwards, mm. but we definitely knew yeah. that we but we wanted One kids. Yeah. yeah, that's you, why it's good to have it before, so yeah. that we know you don't get in, and then someone says, "No, I don't want kids." You yeah, know? no, no. Oh lord, what did I just get myself into? Yeah. No, 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 no. Man, this has been a good conversation. I'm even thinking like, bro, let's just continue going, but I know you have to go somewhere at five o'clock, so Sorry. I'm going to. I got two questions for you. Let's do I'll it. End the show, man. And I always ask everybody this question. So you've been watching the show, so you know what is coming. Okay. So the, huh. the, <laughs> the question I have for you, the first one is this. If there was one experience that you could take away, just minus delete from all your experiences in life, what would it be? Delete it? Yeah. Do you always ask this question? I always ask this have question. Have I fast forward this part of the video? <laughs> if so I get deleted. This guy don't watch your episode today. <laughs> I see you. <laughs> Oof. Yeah. What's your second question, by the way? No, nah, go answer this one first. If you could delay, just minus, remove from all your experiences in life, what would it be? Is this such an experience or not? Hey, honestly, I don't think there is. At everything that I've done... Made you where you are. Not only made me, but took me to where I am today. Yeah. Not that I'm rich or anything like that, but I'm rich here. I'm happy. Yeah, I'm better. I'm happy. Mm -hmm. And if anything that I take away could potentially take this away and mm -hmm. take my marriage away, mm -hmm. I don't want to take. I don't want to mess with it because yeah. sometimes I've had this feeling of, man, I wish I wish I would have met my wife like mm. ten yeah, years yeah. ago. Mm. Yeah. Even though I couldn't, because I think we're, I'm seven years older than her, mm. so that's 
Yeah, that's that not a good thing. No, no. Yeah, that's yeah. Not, but I was, and then at the same time, I'm like, no, because maybe it just had to be at that time because she was at the most compatible with me, mm-hmm. and I was the most compatible with her, yeah. and that's why God decided for us to meet that day, mm-hmm. and, and 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 still took eight months for her to get used to the idea and etc cetera, etc cetera. Mm-hmm. and it was just perfect timing don't mess with time everything is supposed to happen when it happens yeah and that's good so i would no i wouldn't take anything away yeah so everything that happened to you made you to become a better version of yourself 100 percent. yeah that's a good response and then the last question that i'm going to ask you is this if there was one advice you could give to your younger self what would it be breathe <laughs> take your time yeah don't stress it out mm-hmm. everything's gonna be okay mm-hmm. you're young yeah like i said before right it's mm-hmm. just and that happens with anything with my leg or with anything so when you're having a tough time it's not the end of the world yeah right it's a season. always remember humble yourself hey you think that this is the worst thing in the world yeah no Mm-hmm. Talk to people and find out that there's people that haven't eaten in three days. Yeah. And and there's there's kids that their parents just passed. Mm-hmm. And you're blessed. Breathe. So mm-hmm. I would just tell myself, hey, everything's going to be okay. You're going to be a 35-year-old mm-hmm. and still not know exactly what you want to do with your life. And that's okay. Mm-hmm. You don't see me here freaking out. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> no. Yeah. I know I'm going to be okay. Yeah. Because I have a good wife. I have a good mother. Mm-hmm. I have a good group of people. Mm. and i'm happy i'm happy with myself even yeah. though i don't know what i'm going to be or do mm. with my life i'm happy yeah so that's it just take your time and breathe take your time and think about it mm. so if is there anything you want to say to my audience for end the show hey subscribe <laughs> like the video I, it's a pleasure for me to be here uh-huh. um yeah you know I, I think that this is the way that you learn in life is mm-hmm. through conversation and talking to people and yeah. and um i feel like this went smooth i, I was nervous before coming here yeah. i told you about yeah. this i told you come relax yeah and, and i feel relaxed man yeah I, man yeah you nailed it yeah and a lot of people are going to learn a lot of things hopefully, hopefully. from the one and only oscar Ayala. <laughs> almost i'm no expert i'm no expert yeah. i'm not a, of course not. I'm I'm the least perfect person in the world, probably. Mm. Right. Um, so I don't want to, you know, oh, I know this is how you do things. Nah. No, that's not We're what all I'm trying to do. Life. I, yeah, absolutely. Yep. I'm still learning every day, yeah. every second of every minute. You're mm. still learning. Mm-hmm. I'm just I'm trying to do better right now than I did 30 minutes and, and so forth. Right. Yeah. The, the last 30 minutes ago. Yeah. So and that's very that's important. It. So yeah. thank you very much thank for coming for to the me. show, man. Thank you, bro. It's an honor honor for me and hey guys there you have it so please i hope you took some notes down because this was a great conversation and i know that a lot of people are going through a lot of things out there but no that is hope and always try to find ways to make it better everything happens for a reason and no there's a season for everything do not lose hope and remember smile Because when you smile, there's hope for a better tomorrow.